they really want me to like November 11th, 2024, the list Valley School Board call to order. Um, citizens may come on, on items appearing on the agenda when invited to participate in the agenda item by the board chair. Citizens may come in on items related to school district business not appearing on this agenda during the public comment portion of the meeting. Citizens, after identifying themselves, will proceed to make comments as briefly as the part of the subject of the matter. Basic rules of the comment are protected at all times. The chairperson may interrupt or terminate an individual statement when appropriate, including when statements are out of order to lengthy breach personal privacy rights are abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or otherwise in public. The public should realize that this is a trustee business meeting conducted in a public format. For we'll stand for the <laughs> you want to do this public? They want to do Okay. Gotta make it official. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're going to the uh, consent agenda. We will have the copy of the minutes and the last four meetings. I'll make a motion for the consent agenda. Second. Is there any discussion? Aye. 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 Hi, I'm Nate Nelson. I'm a parent of an eighth grade student here. Um, I've coached an eighth grade girl stopped for two years ago. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. I helped coach seventh grade basketball team here last year. I'm hoping to coach again this year. Um, we're looking to use a small gym on weeknights that there are basketball games in the big gym. When we signed up, to have the open gym, they didn't disclose that we weren't able to use the small gym this year. So the nights I picked and one of the other basketball coaches were not allowed to use the small gym while there's a game. And I brought it to attention last year about why we couldn't use the gym. And they said it was because of a custodian thing. They couldn't keep it clean. You know, me along with another coach offered to clean the area and we were shut down. And then that issue arrived again this year. So. What I'm having to do now is I have to go to Stillwater Lutheran Church. I pay $50 for practice. The practice there. I'm a taxpayer at this school. And me, along with all the other parents, are just kind of wondering if we can get some changes made to where we can use that small gym just on nights that there's games. That's all that's all I'm trying to do. So we can keep these girls playing and practicing. Because otherwise, you know, coming out of my pocket, I'm not going to pass that cost on to the girls. So I just would like to see if there's a way we can make something work, um, whether it's every Tuesday and Thursday or um, game nights, so basically Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Those are the night, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the nights that I pick for my girls, which work best because of youth group nights, that kind of thing. So we've had a little hiccup in our practice schedule because of this. So um, I guess that's all we're asking is that we can have access to that gym on nights that there's games. Um, instead of having to take the girls down to Stillwater Church, pay $50, and it's a later time in the evening, so we're not getting done until it's after 8 o'clock when we get done versus 7 o'clock here. So that's the change I'd like to see made if, if it's possible. Sure. So. Thanks. Thanks, Nate. Um, we'll we'll look into that. Um, Richard um, um, will be getting back to you on that one. Well, I just have one question. Are these 
uh, West Valley teams, or are they outside? It's an, all West, my team is West Valley girls. Right, but yeah. but it's a it's a it's a. It's um, not a, it's not a school club, affiliate. It's, it's a travel about the one. Perfect. Okay, that's all I wanted to clarify. So is that. Do you guys use the other gym when there's not games? When there's not games, just use the small gym. What do you do right now if there's if there's not? Well, now we're using the big gym when there's no game, no. and then I go to Stillwater and can't do that practice. So. It's nice to have. I mean, last year we just did one practice a week, but I'm trying to open to two practices a week. This year just keep keep them playing. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, well, uh, we can't take any action at this meeting, but we're looking good. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, then we sign to speak. So we'll go on. I have we have some correspondence here. Um, dear school board members, administration, thank you very much for thinking of us in official ed and giving us stipend. You are very appreciated, and I am very thankful to work for a district that supports all that we do. Thank you. In gratitude, Melanie Holman. But we'll be giving the extra stipend for all the extra work that you Okay. Um, do we have any other correspondence or public participation? It will go on to the informational um, West Valley Parent Te Teacher and so. Anybody here for that? Nobody? Okay, West Valley Teachers Organization. Do we have any report from them? Nobody. Okay, Superintendent's report. Um, so I wanted to go over the results of the survey that was sent out to parents a couple of weeks ago by now. Um, okay. And just briefly go over um, some specific or some comments at the end too. Um, I wanted to make it clear that this uh, four day school week. Uh, Discussion is, is in its very infancy stages. There's been no commitments yet. It's uh, still in the investigatory process for that. But we um, had some surprising results in favor of a four day school week. 40% uh, uh, parents strongly favored, 19% uh, favored it, and then about 17% were undecided. So that means about 20% or so uh, were either no preference, strongly opposed, or opposed. Uh, so if you split that undecided you know, number in half, let's say these half go for supporting it, half go to not support it, um, that's a pretty strong mandate uh, to at least look at it pretty closely. Uh, but again, there's been no commitments made on that yet. Uh, <clears throat> So there's been a lot of discussion about this because of teacher retention issues around the state. There's been some, uh, some preliminary litigation uh, that's you know been behind this. There's also been some legislative action that's been talked about. Nothing, of course, could happen until the legislature leaves. But again, we'll keep our our ear to the ground on it and some of the processes that uh, the state, um, I guess, does about four day school weeks. A lot of districts are. Going to a 40 school week, not a lot in this area, uh, but we're starting to kind of see that shift from the east side of the state to the west side as well. Um, we asked parents what the greatest concern of a possible four day school week were. Uh, the top uh, was no concerns, which, which was very interesting to us at 38.7%. The length of the school day was a concern for some parents, especially elementary kids, and that came in at about 22%. Um, child care was also uh, rated fairly high, but only in about 20%, 18%. Uh, so again, that's about the same number that was either opposed or strongly opposed. So I think those two are, are pretty related. Um, we asked parents what they would be willing to accept in a four-day week. And a longer school day was overwhelmingly uh, the top choice of those selected at 60%. Um, and then extending the calendar also was a top choice at 33%. And then the rest were all about the same. Overwhelmingly, the choice for parents was to have Friday off instead of Monday. Monday will receive 10% of the vote. No preference was at 15 and then 76% uh, 
was for, for Friday. Um, and then about the same number said that a four day school week would impact their family in a positive manner. Um, there were a lot more neutrals though, about 10% were neutrals into that, so about 27%, but the numbers were supporting it in favor of about the same. Uh, wanted to go quickly over um, some school funding formula issues that we're seeing uh, in, in the state. One that is gaining some traction is potentially having the sixth graders count as middle schoolers for funding purposes, which would be uh, really good news for us because it would increase our bottom line base budget. Right now, sixth grade, even though it's, it's in middle school pretty much everywhere, is still considered elementary. And you get less money for elementary kids than you do middle school kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would, be, that, that would help us out quite a bit. Right now, there's uh, not a lot of movement to increase base budgets off of an inflationary number. Right now, it's pretty um, guaranteed, or at least uh, the people who know and follow this very, very well are thinking that they'll stick to the 3% guaranteed increase for that instead of going up. Again, that could change, but uh, there's people who speak to elected legislators and holds host meetings, and that's that's kind of the, the thought process out there. Um, there is uh, at least a small effort out there to get a coalition of, of people together to support changing the requirements from number of hours in a school year to number of days. And the reason that they're looking at that is because it was tried um, in Ohio to change that to prevent districts from going to a four day school week potentially. Um, and so it failed there. Uh, and so they I don't feel like it'll get a lot of traction in Montana because so many districts on the east side of our state they rely on a four day school week to attract teachers and, and keep teachers. Uh, so anyway, that's that's out there too. Uh, yeah, and then the uh, survey for the culture piece of our school or how parents felt about our school was, uh, at least in my opinion, I thought good news. And of course, there's always room to approve. Uh, we asked on a scale of zero to 10, how satisfied you were about West Valley. Uh, and eight, nine, and 10 were, were uh, the most popular choices with 14% um, where it was seven and then it was you know, well in the single digits below that. So um, yeah, so that, that's that's good news for school. I feel that way partly because defining success in a school is pretty impossible because what is success for one family is not success for another. Um, and really there's no, you know, when you come in, this says this is what you have to do in order to make your school successful. There's climate, there's culture concerns, there's, there's academic concerns, there's, you know, tons of different, people with their hands, you know, in the pie. And so really to get even that high of a number, I think is, is that we're on the right track, if not, you know, obviously room for improvement like anywhere else. But I was really excited to see how parents felt um, about our teachers. They were very, very supportive of our, you know, the thinking that we have a really, really good staff, which is very, very true. Um, yeah, it was well in the high 70s, um, rated those things a five. Uh, and then just wanted to read a couple of uh, comments to put it out there. Again, there's no, uh, you know, I guess identifying information that would give away like who, who these people are. Um, and I so appreciate all the work teachers do to keep our kids safe and learning. I know the teachers my children have had in the past take a vested interest in them and want them to succeed. My mama heart is at ease knowing my kids are with adults that care for them. That's good. Great staff, great administration, great board. Uh, the staff are, are amazing. They go above and beyond for my kids. After five years here, our kids have yet to have a teacher that isn't wonderful. Uh, my kids have gone here since 2012. Lots of kids. This has been a school filled with love, support, enthusiasm, high standards, and hope. Keep up the good work. Uh, the teachers are welcoming and do a great job communicating. Front desk staff is always kind and helpful, uh, which is absolutely true. Friendliest office staff I've ever encountered. Teachers have great communication. Uh, so a lot of those ongoing things were, were pretty positive. And of course, there were some comments uh, of where we can improve. So we always take those to heart too. Um, yeah. You don't want to read the worst one? <laughs> the worst one. Yeah, well, the, there was one. Sign Jeff. Yeah. Sign Jeff. Yeah. 
distracted. Um, there was one about how, and I really wish that this wasn't a um, thing out there that we decide to charge, you know, uh, developers taxes and fees because we have absolutely no control over that, and we get comments about that quite often that we need to look at, you know, charging developers taxes or increasing fees, and you know that's definitely above our ability to be able to do, but we see it in a lot of surveys and comments and just in general. So uh, yeah, I wish I wish that wasn't out there, but, but it is. And so, you know, we'll do our best with what we have. But um, oh, I wanted to give a shout out to Anita. Um, Ellis, our uh, elementary music teacher, she put on some great Veterans Day uh, concerts. Uh, my, my son was in fourth grade, so of course I, I went and uh, she had research. Uh, they each talked about how they had a family tied to um, a military branch, um, you know, relatives or, you know, uh, that type of thing. And, and I really thought it was, it was well done. And, uh, you know, it was each grade kind of, or I mean, excuse me, each class had their own time to go. And uh, we've had to split up kids in that grade level just because of the numbers. Uh, and what I mean by that is there aren't enough specialists right now to be able to accommodate each classroom separately. So for example, my son's classroom was split and then attends specials with a different classroom. And it looked like they were a part of the same crew, which takes a lot of skill for a specialist teachers. Um, they have upwards of 30 kids. They're, they're big kids. And so I uh, do so appreciate all of what they do for that because it's, it's really I, hard. I didn't have to concur with that. I I, first, I watched it last year because we split it yeah. And it is just remarkable for those kids who have been yeah. making that connection with an uncle or a dad or like, right. a, a grandpa yeah. that had been in war. You know, they have to be able to go home and talk about that and to get that information. I, that was. Yeah. It was just almost it brought you to tears to hear the patriotism. Right. I said before I thought that they should she should make a video of that. That that should yeah you know, that would have been a big plus. That would have been because it really shows yeah you know, yeah it really does. Mm -hmm. yeah and the values of West Valley and mm -hmm. um, yeah it was great and it was really interesting to hear about the Space Force too with that. Space Force was a hit in our house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jack's just, been singing it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I wanted to to give a shout out there. And then uh, we actually, Maggie and I were in the office the other day when OPI called and asked if our enrollment numbers were accurate because they were so high and they were higher. And they are not seeing that across the state, so they I think they double checked us, didn't they? They did. did twice. We had called together, and then I got another one. Yeah, but we might be like, sure. Um, yes, we we are sure those are our numbers. And so what that means for us is that potentially that could increase our budget because it increased significantly enough mm -hmm. that we could see some benefit there with mm -hmm. that, which would which would help us tremendously. So uh, they'll start reviewing them. So no, go ahead. They'll start. They, what they said is that they'll start reviewing that in December, and the um. So there's nothing we have to do at this point. They'll start reviewing it internally, and then when they see a large enough jump, then they'll start giving getting us more funding this year. So we won't have to wait for next year, and that that's why they do that. So and that's based off the A and B count in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's an A and B count again in February. How many students are we at right now? We are at about, I think, 105 or 805. Okay. Um, on on AMD day, we're at 801. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we actually were up quite a bit and we had some families leave and then we've had some come in. Um, so, yeah. Which was another thing on the survey that I was surprised about is a lot of our families are pretty new to us and, and uh, within one to four years. Uh, which kind of shows the growth we've had in this district that you know, I think it was 20% or more, 30% or more of our families are new, which is just kind of an interesting dynamic when you've got some really, really old school West Valley and then you've got this kind of new families coming in. It's, it's really an interesting you know, dynamic that we have. So you're talking about splitting specials. How... Um... Like how many grade levels are having to be split? Is it all of them? No, it's not all of them. Uh, 
beyond I think it's first grade, I know, um, fourth grade, really, yeah, I don't know if there's any more than that. The second's really high at the moment, too, right? Second's pretty high, too. Yeah, second's actually very, very high. They're, they're over accreditation numbers right now. They're about 103%. Should be. But yeah, oh, it's a it's challenging. I think hopefully I, uh, passing that levy was absolutely huge for us that we can then look at next year and, and hopefully you know, try to try to see what we can we can add to take care of some of those things parents want us to take care of. But that, that's a it's always a challenge for sure because uh, enrollment's really tricky. Uh, in fact, I just did an analysis of it, and I don't want to—I don't want to bore you with it. But um, there was a couple of grade levels a few years ago where we had some really unprecedented increases in enrollment, um, and then we had some decreases in other grade levels. So staffing that has been has been hugely challenging. We've had some bubble classes uh, go through. I could find it. Grading. Uh, well, and the issue when you and I were sitting down to talk about teaching numbers and like where do we allocate an extra staff person or do it do we? Yeah. I mean, it was a jump by was it, it was yeah. in second grade that it jumped right. by like twenty some odd kids it, like right. in the span of just a few days. Yes, so, exactly. And that was in August. So then you're scrambling. Yep, and I really wish parents would understand that we rely so much on those you know, enrollments that come in early to plan. And we have especially you know, kindergarten families that wait until you know, August or even when, when school starts to register their kids, mm -hmm. not thinking, of course, and I, I totally understand it, but not thinking that we've been trying to plan for this since March or, or sooner. And it's just really, really impossible. Yeah, the um, enrollment in third grade from 2018 to 2019 went up from 58 to 73, um, just out of the blue. Um, and then in 2020, in 2021, kindergarten went up uh, by 15 kids, which is all in one year, which is a whole class. It's from K to first. Um, so, yeah, our projected enrollment is actually going to possibly be a little bit flatter, um, which might be, you know, good news in a way for us. Uh, also, fifth grade jumped a tremendous amount too. There, it's one grade level is at 111, 111 kids, which is which is a lot of kids. Um, Next year, we project to be about 812 kids. And then uh, after that, it, it goes to like 804 and then about 800. So we're going to be right about that 800 projection for a while. Uh, what do you think the <clears throat> maximum student capacity would be? Probably really the 700. Probably <laughs> 700. <laughs> Realistically, with that many kids and that many staff in one building, the septic is, is pretty straight. I know that. Uh, we, yeah, we. I, I would say that lunchroom wise, you know, playground wise in that elementary, you know, even just out here, um, you know, just having that many kids it, in, in, you know, transitional periods is very hard to, because people don't necessarily think about. You know, that's you know, a huge increase in lunches served. That's a huge increase in, in just the amount of kids you need to to have in a lunchroom or in a, in a commons area. And then it just strains your, your para staff. It, it just has a lot, a lot more implications than just looking at your ratio of class size in, in a school. So I would say, Matt, I mean, we're already Busting at the seams for for that, but I would say if we get up to eight fifty, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, which could happen to us with the building that's going on. Um, I don't foresee it in the next few years, but the development that's across from Glacier High School there is certainly see some more kids for us. For what sure. we just jumped like fifty kids this year? Were we like yeah. seven sixty? We got, yeah. we got down to seven fifty four. I think at one point last year, but I think our A and B was about to seven sixty. Yeah. And we huge. we started the school year with eight twelve. Yeah, and then lost in you. So I mean that was mm -hmm. fifty two kids right there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's super hard. 
to use that and project it out. Um, and what we're seeing too is our attention ratios are really, really solid throughout. We do see a dip um, and, and have in the last few years in the middle school where it's gone down a little bit. But they're even positive in the elementary, which means you're throwing kids, you're not, you're not using kids in there. So, yeah. But it's, it's all, I mean, it's all good news too. I mean, I would rather be in that type of a problem than in, you know, other uh, schools where they're losing every kid and they're trying to figure out what to do with, you know, with that problem too. But with teachers as hard as they are to find now, it's it's uh it's really it's really tough to staff. Yeah. So yeah, I've got all of the all the numbers right there ready to look, look at just so that we're prepared. That's really all all I have. I, I think we all have a good day. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, thank and you guys for doing that. Oh yeah, everybody really did a good job with that. Yeah, that's been a really interesting process. Yeah, we can have I thought, so, well, maybe you can print out your piece. You know, that like, yeah, paper. I bet 17 pages of contents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is no thing we need to speak. When you think that uh, that many people carry the content, that was pretty good. Yeah, we had a pretty good turnout for the survey 326. Respond responses. That's yeah. We had 419 for the le for the levy, so and that was including community members too. Well, but I mean, we had really parents, yeah. Yeah, we have a solid sample size to really base our mm -hmm. analytics to decisions yeah. off of. Um, you know, as we start to kind of. Well, for some reason, I thought that number was higher. I had it in my head that we had well, way more yeah. that applied to the survey or re responded to the survey. And yeah, when we looked at it, it was like, oh, I don't know why I thought that, but. That's what I, I had in my head. Like 3, 326 is still a very, very good response rate. We had a kid, and a lot of people are going to have kids in school now. Yeah. 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 I guess that's going to be two parents and only 300 out of the 800. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I really enjoyed the comments just in terms of us being able to kind of. I mean, I know we're quiet and public comment and stuff happens. And there's like so much we say in these meetings, but it really does fuel a lot of thought around like, okay, what are we doing well? Where can we improve? Um, you know, obviously budgetary constraints are yeah. <laughs> a big limitation, but it is it is and that's a lot of it totally high <laughs> useful. <laughs> Absolutely. And our comments were great. Yeah. I think, yeah. and you know, the whole valley being able to share numbers. I mean, every, I don't care where you go, where you look, they're all even the same thing. Way on. You have to yep. go and, and, and uh, that was a lot of the comments that dealt with that too. And then mm -hmm. so many kids, and, uh, and uh, nobody's quite, quite on the way to deal with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, small class sizes yeah. came up, you know, and it was one of the things that we talked about with the levy, but with that last minute surge in enrollment, it, yeah. like it just, it was possible when we were looking at our numbers, we're like, oh, these are really good percentages, like, you know, we're below accreditation and everything, and then we updated the numbers and we're like, dear heavens. Yeah, yeah. So, I feel like my OPI is calling us. I'm sure we're yeah. the only one across the state that's growing. Could very well be. Why especially that Bozeman should be growing? <clears throat> yeah. I think they may just have more schools. I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I wasn't predicting that. I yeah. thought we'd kind of want to. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we thought, for sure. But I, I told OPI too, as we we're in a very unique district and that it's you know, a desirable area to be in. It's the last real spot in Kalispell to like really put a lot of stuff in. And so it's, you know, and we have a good reputation out there too. So we get a lot of kids, you know, care people who want to buy in our district and build. So. We could certainly change that. We could change that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're going to work on it. <clears throat> Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Um, going to the action items then. Um, we 
Yeah, we've rearranged this a bit, and I think it works with the interim. Jimmy would uh, make the finance as an action item because we always do have to approve them, so we'll put that down on an action item now. So if everybody look at the bills. <clears throat> If you guys are wondering, um, those mileage reimbursements that you're seeing in the very first group, those are parents who um, we have to pay reimbursement for transporting their children to and from either Crossroads or Flathead um, Co-op. So that's what those are. And we don't have a bus that runs there then? Correct. And what about the Shakespeare in the park, the um, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. That is where the um the play isn't it the play yeah, that was approved last year. I was yeah, just it's a, a group of I think college people that come in and they put on a performance for the middle schoolers. I think it's seventh grade and eighth grade, uh, and then they do an after school thing where they do like a an acting camp kind of thing. So through you, I think I mean, they've, they've done that before. Yeah, we've done it before. Yeah, and then COVID, we didn't, but we, we've done it uh, most of the years I've been here. Will they be approaching us then this year or next year? Probably. Yeah. Or another. Because you have to commit to them, I think, by, this, by early spring, if not late winter, to schedule it for the next year mm -hmm. to get here in the, in the fall. It was paid, but uh, wasn't it? Was it, was it, was it, was it? Um, no, Richard, it looks like it was paid out of the um, special funds. And it, like, I, I we went off the coding from prior years, and it looked like it had a, a profit yeah. order. Yeah, mm -hmm. that full house must be firewall or something. Yeah. Yeah. The yep. infrastructure around that. Yep. But we did a three-year subscription. Yes, and again, that was one of the POs that were that I inherited over the summer. So Does that come out of the tech lady? Well, and and actually, I didn't code it out of there, but I um I need to talk to Cat a little bit more about. What exactly what it is, and if it falls, because and then I probably would do a journal entry to change that. But like when I first at Flush look at it, um, I would believe it come out of 128, but I paid it like it had been paid in the past. But I don't want to overcommit to that new levy, you know, I don't want to throw everything underneath there. Yeah. So I, I want to talk to it, wasn't originally there um, on the PO when I received it, but I, I feel like that's worth a conversation with Richard Cat and I to determine that I believe it probably does fall in that line or fall under there. So I would just do a journal entry to change that. They provide more services to the just firewall they use without cat do troubleshooting things uh, like that, monitor systems and they, they're part of our fishing. Uh, Support too for emails and stuff. <clears throat> I'm sure it's cheaper to do a three year rather than a one year yeah. six months. Mm -hmm. How about on the <clears throat> first page, the line 2118 between the strainers? Did that come out of the building maintenance fund or that, did that come out of the general fund? Uh, that came out of the general fund. And again, I coded it as it had done a lot of what I'm doing right now. Is looking at what what we've done in the past, um, leaving out one year that I don't think voting was very good. But you know, especially I, I feel like at this time last year, Mark was working with Cindy, and so I think Cindy would have advised him where to pull things from. And so that's where I was. That's a lot of times that's where I'm pulling my my where I'm you know kind of I'm using historical information. We had this. 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 We had this.
Yeah, it's called FICO. Not that this is. They're, they're, they're really in this facility improvement corporation, but they go by FICO. Oh, okay. So that's it. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the bills. Second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Um, now we're changing the format a bit on this human resources personnel um, reporting. Yes, uh, and and that's in our um, Maggie sent a copy of the new the new format, so we have the information. It's just that the names are not going to appear on the agenda agenda, but they'll appear in in your in your packet. Uh, and I did print it off today just so everybody could see what it is. And basically, what that does is it allows us to just add, you know, lines underneath. It'll be more important as like end of the year for resignations to get new hires, all that kind of stuff, that it's all just in one place. And it's not, so our agenda is that look, you know, pages long, and then we get off the COVID, so. And actually I just was kind of modeling after other districts around here. So. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to show the names on the agenda to you? And the only reason I'm wondering is because some people might be interested in coming to a meeting depending on what staff changes are taking place at our meeting. It is linked. So if they were to link, if they were if they were to open up the link on the agenda, they wouldn't be able to see the names. Yeah, if you open the link on the agenda, it has the names. Yeah, I can do that. I'm just not sure if they'll know what's the agenda is able to do that. And if there's like a we post a hard copy somewhere as well. Is it so? It's it's not like um, locked, like it's viewable to the public, right? Anybody with the link, okay? Yeah, we could put that hard copy out there on the on the uh, when I'm when you put it on the window. The notification, it might be an idea. Yeah, I don't know how many people even look at the hard copy, but if that's all they were looking at, they would be able to see. What oh, like the paper copy. Oh, I, I see, see what, what you're saying. saying. Oh yeah, you're right. We should put it. We should print it out. And put it with our yeah. Know, as long as we just so yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we need uh, a motion to approve that the the hires. Can make a motion to approve the West Valley Personnel Activity Report? Do we need to make a motion to actually hire or? Yes, you would need a motion then. Okay, so I'll make a motion. You, you might name them. I mean, in the... To accept the resignation of Jeannie. Oh, no, he's a hire. He's a hire. Okay, sorry. I'll make a motion to accept the hiring of Jeannie Roth as a 0.5 FTE lunchtime aide and para, and Chris Keller as a 1.0 FTE assistant extracurricular coach for robotics. I'll second. We didn't get any further discussion on those. All right, all those in favor. So, sorry, oh, just on this okay. document. So, is this going to be a running document that'll have everybody on there throughout the year? Well, uh, I'll just get updated. Yeah, we'll get updated. So, what, what I'll do up at the top, there's a date okay. span from it's, it'll be from board meeting to board meeting. Okay. So, there'll be a new one for next for next month. Um, as needed, but these these will be part of the minutes. Like I'll, I'll include the link in the minutes as well, so they'll be there. But that is something that then maybe we could look at compiling historically, or like sure. be able to keep a running tab of what positions we're losing or gaining. Or yeah, I don't know. Too might be helpful. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Any good 